We learned recently Russia was planning a false flag operation as a way to justify to the world invading Ukraine. This wasn't some weird, unverified leak that showed up online. No, this came from government agencies. That level of transparency and the pace of the intel is really unusual. Using national security correspondent Sasha Ingber asked around, what is the strategy here? It's a standoff between a former KGB officer, Russian President Vladimir Putin, and a former comedian and actor, Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky. Russia is laying the groundwork to have the option of fabricating a pretext for an invasion. This kind of intelligence is being shared by the Biden administration in near real time. A spokesperson for the National Security Council tells Newsy the disclosures are meant to, quote, deny Russia the opportunity to use these lies to justify an invasion of Ukraine. Would you say these declassifications are helping to prevent a Russian invasion of Ukraine? It's too early to say whether it's going to prevent an incursion. Uh, forces continue to build up and nobody knows yet whether Putin's going to decide to invade. But it's clear that there's an information warfare game going on. Paul Colby led the CIA's Russia operations. He says exposing Moscow's plans now helps discredit its excuses for actions taken later. And he's confident the U.S. intelligence community is carefully assessing what it shares to protect sources and methods since Russia's security services could use it to modify their own operations. They will be looking to try to find out the source of that leak. They will try to close it. And that's one of the risks of using intelligence information uh, um, uh, in an information war. The U.S. warnings range from false flags to fake videos. We have information that they've pre-positioned a, a group of operatives. Uh, to conduct what we call a false flag operation. We know that this is an option under consideration uh, that would involve you know, actors uh, playing mourners uh, for people who are killed in, in, in an event uh, that they would have created themselves, uh, that would involve the deployment of corpses uh, to represent uh, bodies purportedly killed in, uh, of people purportedly killed in an, an incident like this. Um, Intelligence historian Calder Walton says it all sounds familiar. When it comes to false flags, Russia is unambiguously the past master of using them, deploying them. The Kremlin has used them in the past during the Cold War in order to use them as a pretext to military uh, intervention in countries in its so-called near abroad. And it's done so um, in order to shore up um, its security in those countries and in some cases install pliant leaders. Recent British intelligence warned the Kremlin is trying to install a pro-Russian leader in Kyiv. Still, the disclosures have brought skepticism of officials' assertions. Well, where is the declassified information other than you coming out here and saying? Obtaining records for a deep understanding of the moment can take decades. There's also another wrinkle on this. The Russian government, of course, would know that the U.S. government is collecting that intelligence. So how much of it is being deliberately broadcast by Russian troops in Russia, Russian government, knowing that it would be intercepted? And here we find ourselves in the wilderness of mirrors of intelligence and counterintelligence, smoke and mirrors. Officials in Russia continue to deny there are any plans to invade Ukraine. And also today, Chance, the Senate Intelligence Committee sent a letter to Biden urging him to share as much intelligence as possible with Ukraine. That was a fascinating way he put that wilderness of mirrors. You can kind of, you know, just get paralyzed in that, not knowing what is what. But I wonder, Sasha, as you were going through your sources here, is is this a correction to 2016, maybe, when the intel about Russian interference in the election, it was held so close for so long that it barely made a splash at the time when they finally put it out? Well, that's an interesting question, because certainly the Obama administration did not sound those alarm bells loudly. Now, of course, years later, Biden said that Mitch McConnell didn't sign bipartisan statement uh, trying to show awareness of Russian interference in 2016. So there are other factors at play. The political fracture certainly benefited Russia. 
but maybe it'd be more fair to make a correction comparison to 2014 with the Obama administration, because certainly they did not deter Russia from invading, from annexing Crimea. We are still seeing fighting in eastern Ukraine. But I should also say that the United States has also gone a little bit too far. Back in 1983, Chance, the United States insisted that the Soviets purposefully shot down a passenger plane and then years later concluded that it was likely a mistake. So this is a sensitive area, very delicate, whichever way you go.